If you look at money growth on a a year over year basis, Mm -hmm. it was negative for, I think, about a year and a half, maybe more. Uh, Money is a leading indicator for inflation. And we do believe uh, that inflation will go much lower than people expect right now. Wouldn't be surprised to see it go negative, Uh, especially especially if the consumer is worried about a job loss, whether because of AI and automation generally um, or what have you. So the saving rate tends to go up during those periods. And that will mean, we believe, that companies will have to price even more aggressively. On Friday, the U.S. Labor Department reported that employers added 254,000 jobs in September, exceeding LSG economists' predictions by more than 100,000. The unemployment rate also dropped to 4.1 percent, and job gains for both July and August were revised upward. July's job creation was adjusted from 89,000 to 144,000, while August's numbers were revised from 142,000 to 159,000. Following the report, renowned economist and former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers commented on social media, criticizing the Federal Reserve's decision to cut rates by 50 basis points in September. He noted, today's employment report confirms suspicions that we are in a high neutral rate environment, where responsible monetary policy requires caution in rate cutting. In hindsight, the 50 basis point cut in September was a mistake, though not a significant one. With this data, both no landing and hard landing are risks the Federal Reserve must consider. Summers also pointed out that nominal wage growth remains above pre-COVID levels and shows no signs of slowing down. Analysts noted this is the first time the jobs report exceeded expectations since May, raising doubts about whether the Fed's 50 basis point cut was too aggressive. The stronger-than-expected jobs data has dampened expectations for further rate cut. Before the report, markets anticipated a nearly 50% chance of another 50 basis point cut next month. But now the odds of a 25 basis point cut in November have surged to over 90%. In a recent interview with Bloomberg Television, ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood shared her perspective, stating that, unlike Summers, she believes the Fed is on the right path, as inflation is no longer the primary concern. Wood also discussed her outlook for the U.S. economy in 2025 and beyond. Before we continue with the rest of the video, do check out daily 5-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. Do you think the Fed rate cut was a mistake? Absolutely not. Uh, Not at all. Um, It's been very interesting to watch the revisions in economic activity. Until this report, the revisions in the employment numbers had been down and they were much much weaker uh, than had uh, originally been reported. You know, we look at uh, earnings reports and look at their revenues and we're seeing a lot of companies showing negative revenues. So, You know, the headline numbers are heavily influenced recently, certainly in in terms of some of the upward revisions in personal income by transfer payments, that's government stimulus, and interestingly, uh, dividends. But if you look at the uh, economy, the cyclical part of the economy is sick. It's sick. If you look at uh, the sectors in the economy, one by one, they've been falling into a recession, no matter what the headline numbers say. Housing went down immediately when the uh, Fed started raising rates. We're we're down 20 to 40 percent still. That's a recession. Hmm. Uh, You've got non-residential construction in recession, autos. Very I know, weak. Kathy, I know it's a backward looking number, but then what do you make of today's payrolls report? 254,000 jobs added to the economy for the month yeah. of September. And that doesn't you, sa- seem recessionary. Uh, it's uh, So if you just let me finish, Tim, I'll, I'll get to that in one minute. So we've got those sectors and then you've got uh, the, the small and medium business sector. Uh, their confidence is at 0809 levels. 
And we've got certain pricing measures, uh, certainly the cyclical ones, uh, that have been deflationary, actually. Uh, so one thing that uh, I do think is going on that is helping is as prices are coming down and the, cons the consumer's getting better and better deals and, uh, and they're spending. Uh, so I think that is sustaining. You know, a lot of people say real growth causes inflation. In this case, and actually in history, most times if you cut prices, you'll get more activity. Uh, the consumer, as long as the labor market hangs in here, and, and yes, today was very reassuring that way. As long as the labor market hangs in here, uh, and the and companies like Walmart and Costco and uh, auto companies either increase their discounts or cut their prices, I think the activity will come uh, and the labor market will continue to hang in. Uh, but if they try and jack prices back up, it was very interesting to see FedEx after turning positive in revenues and then turning negative year over year on rev revenues, basically saying they're going to use prices to make it up. I think that's going to backfire. Uh, and I'll think, I think during the next year, you'll under, that many people will understand how deflationary the undercurrents are in the economy. Now, deflation is not always bad. Part of it is because of innovation technologically enabled innovation. The car prices, EV prices are coming down, their costs are coming down too. So um, I think there, there's, a, a, there's a lot of confusion in terms of what's going on out there uh, because productivity is stronger than expected, giving companies the latitude uh, to cut prices and salvage margins. If that, if that sustains, great. Kathy Wood has consistently argued that the Fed's aggressive rate hikes will eventually lead to deflation, a stance she continues to hold. In her view, the Fed has overdone it with rate cuts and now risks pushing the economy into a deflationary period. The ARK Invest CEO believes the solution is for the central bank to implement significant rate cuts as inflation is expected to turn negative at some point in 2025. Labor attorney and foundation law group partner Eric Bean agrees with Kathy, stating that the 50 basis point cut was a positive step for the U.S. economy. According to Bean, the higher rate cut was necessary due to the slowing labor market and an uptick in unemployment filings. He emphasized that with inflation under control, the focus should shift to the other side of the Fed's mandate, protecting employment. Speaking with Fox News, Bean added, further cuts, probably more measured than a half point, will be necessary to prevent a significant decline in employment going forward. Now, let's return to Kathy's interview, where she delves deeper into the role of innovation and how the upcoming November elections could shape the future development of technological advancements in the United States. Our focus is on innovation, and something very important happened this past year. Um, we were very concerned that excessive regulation was driving innovation off our shores, uh, particularly when it came to crypto or digital assets. Um, we've had a very hostile regulator. Uh, and, and, and the same, I would say, is true of the um, uh, FTC in terms of denying M&A, because that has prevented a lot of innovative companies from enjoying liquidity events by selling out to bigger companies. Um, I think we're hearing from both, both uh, candidates that those two jobs are on the line, maybe for that reason. And we're seeing more alignment that innovation solves problems and, uh, and, and so we should not discourage it. So from that point of view, um, uh, you know, I'm happy to see the bipartisan movement here. Um, uh, you know, we'll favor lower regulations every day when it comes uh, to innovation. I don't think tariffs are a great a, a great thing at all for uh, innovation and for economic activity. Uh, so there's something on both sides that will give us pause. But um, the most important thing is the biggest impediments to innovation. We think that that we're developing clarity around what's going to happen at the SEC and uh, the FTC. Well, we've been doing research on AI for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. That's why we were so early into NVIDIA. Uh, and, you know, we've uh, obviously uh, 
taken it down in most of our portfolios out of the flagship. One of the things that we've been looking for is the 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 next big play. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we think NVIDIA is still a fine stock, but in terms of the unexpected out there, um, we do think it's going to be in the software layers. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you know, Palantir mm -hmm. has become a big position for us in the top 10. UiPath as well, it had a stumble, but it's coming back now. And I think as more and more people understand how well positioned it is, uh, it will do very well. But a lot of the software companies that we think are going to benefit are in the private sector. And I'm thrilled that we have a venture fund. Our purpose here is to democratize venture capital so that for $500, you know, anyone can get access to OpenAI, which is the third largest position, or SpaceX, which is the largest position. Um, but if you look at software, many people say, well, we have so many software companies in in the public markets. What do you mean? Uh, and what, what we mean by that is we think that so the software world is going to change fairly dramatically. Uh, and we're going to see a shift maybe a share shift away from software as a service towards platform as a service. Uh, so, so think about Palantir and mm -hmm. foundation models, uh, and infrastructure as a service, so, so cloud. And the reason for that is because engineers are going to be made so much more productive, developers so much more productive by OpenAI and Anthropic and XAI and 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 Google and Meta Meta's uh, Llama Three, we're going to see companies uh, uh, customizing their own software, customizing software for yeah. their own companies, as opposed to just going automatically to you know right. one size fits all software as a service. The Federal Reserve's stance on monetary policy appears to have shifted dramatically following stronger-than-expected labor market data. According to the CME FedWatch tool, the probability of a 50 basis point rate cut in November dropped sharply from 53% last week to around 5% after the latest employment report. The addition of 143,000 private sector jobs in September, surpassing the expected 125,000, indicates the economy remains more resilient than anticipated. This robust rebound, following a weaker August report, has led some economists to question the necessity of any rate cut. Paul Ashworth, chief North American economist at Capital Economics, argued that the recent labor data raises doubts about whether the Fed should ease monetary policy at all. He suggested that the chance of a 50 basis point cut is now highly unlikely, given the strength of the labor market. Nayla Richardson, chief economist at ADP, echoed this view, noting that September's solid job performance challenges earlier predictions of an economic slowdown. In this context, any near-term Fed action is less likely to involve rate cuts, as labor market resilience weakens the case for easing. What are your thoughts? Do you think the Fed will announce another rate cut before the year ends, or will it revert to a more hawkish stance? How do you believe either decision will impact the markets, especially with the presidential election approaching? Please share your opinions in the comments below. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.